Deep in the heart of Southeast Asia, an ancient kingdom thrived. This kingdom, known as Keda, was a beacon of civilization long before many of the world's most famous empires rose to prominence. Keda, a land of lush rainforests and fertile plains, harbored a secret that would shape empires. The region's natural beauty was matched only by the richness of its resources, which played a crucial role in its development. This secret lay not in gold or precious stones, but in the earth itself, iron. The iron deposits found in Kedar were abundant and of high quality, providing the raw material needed for a technological revolution. In 788 BC, long before the rise of Rome or the conquests of Alexander, Kedar mastered the art of iron production. This mastery was not merely a technical achievement, but a transformative force that reshaped the kingdom's destiny. This mastery transformed the kingdom into a powerhouse fueling its rise as a center of trade, wealth, and cultural achievement. The iron tools and weapons produced in Kadar were highly sought after, making the kingdom a hub of commerce and innovation. Join us now as we journey back in time to uncover the story of Kadar's iron, a story etched in the very foundations of this ancient civilization. Through the lens of archaeology, we can piece together the narrative of a society that harnessed the power of iron to build a legacy. The Bujang Valley, nestled in the heartland of Kedah, served as the crucible of this iron revolution. This valley, with its strategic location and rich resources, became the epicenter of iron production and innovation. Here, amidst the verdant landscape, ancient furnaces roared to life, transforming raw ore into a metal that would change the course of history. The techniques developed in Kedah were advanced for their time, showcasing the ingenuity and skill of its people. The year 788 BC marks a pivotal point in this narrative, a time when Kedar's iron production reached new heights, propelling the kingdom onto the world stage. This period saw the refinement of ironworking techniques and the expansion of trade networks, solidifying Kedar's place in history as a center of technological and cultural advancement. The iron produced in Kedar was not only used locally, but also traded far and wide. The kingdom's strategic location along major trade routes allowed it to export its iron goods to distant lands, spreading its influence and forging connections with other civilizations. Traders from across the region flocked to Kedar, eager to acquire its high-quality iron products. This influx of commerce brought wealth and prosperity to the kingdom, enabling it to flourish and expand its cultural and architectural achievements. The wealth generated from iron production and trade allowed Kedar to invest in grand architectural projects and cultural endeavors. The kingdom's cities were adorned with impressive structures, many of which featured intricate ironwork that showcased the skill and artistry of Kedar's craftsmen. Today, the legacy of Kedar's iron heart can still be seen in the remnants of its ancient cities and the continued importance of iron in the region. The story of Kedar is a testament to the transformative power of technology and the enduring impact of human ingenuity. As the sun sets over the Bujang Valley, we are reminded of the timeless legacy of Kedar's Iron Age. This ancient kingdom, with its mastery of iron, left an indelible mark on history, shaping the course of civilizations and leaving a legacy that continues to inspire. Imagine, if you will, the world of 788 BC, a time when the world was vastly different, yet the seeds of modern civilization were being sown. Picture the vast landscapes, untouched by modern machinery, where nature reigned supreme and human ingenuity was just beginning to make its mark. The ancient Egyptians were constructing their mighty pyramids, colossal structures that would stand the test of time. These architectural marvels were not just tombs, but symbols of a civilization's grandeur and its quest for immortality. The precision and effort involved in their construction still baffle modern engineers and historians. Across the ocean, the Olmec civilization was flourishing in Mesoamerica. Known for their colossal stone heads and intricate art, the Olmecs laid the foundations for future Mesoamerican cultures. Their influence can be seen in the art, architecture, and religious practices of later civilizations like the Maya and the Aztec. And in the land we now call Kedah, a new era was dawning, an era forged in iron. This region, rich in natural resources, was becoming a hub of innovation and industry. 
The discovery and utilization of iron would transform not only their tools and weapons, but also their way of life. The air in the Bujang Valley crackled with heat and industry. The valley was alive with the sounds of progress, as furnaces roared and smoke billowed into the sky. This was a place where the raw power of nature was harnessed and transformed by human hands. Men and women, their faces illuminated by the glow of furnaces, worked tirelessly, their skills passed down through generations. These ironworkers were the unsung heroes of their time, their expertise and dedication laying the groundwork for a thriving society. They were the architects of Kedar's success, transforming the landscape and shaping the destiny of their kingdom. The tools and weapons they forged were not just instruments of survival, but symbols of their ingenuity and resilience. The rhythmic pounding of hammers, the hiss of molten metal, and the shouts of laborers filled the air, a symphony of industry that echoed through the valley. This was the heartbeat of Kadar, a testament to the power of human endeavor and the relentless pursuit of progress. The people of Kedar had not only discovered iron, but had mastered its secrets, unlocking its potential to build, to defend, and to trade. Their mastery of ironworking techniques allowed them to create tools and weapons that were stronger and more durable than anything that had come before. Their expertise was about to propel them onto the world stage, connecting them with distant lands and cultures. Through trade, they exchanged not only goods but also ideas and knowledge, fostering a network of cultural and economic exchange that would shape the future of the region. The legacy of Kadar's Iron Age is a testament to the enduring power of human innovation and the unbreakable spirit of a people determined to forge their own destiny. The transformation of raw iron ore into usable metal was a testament to the ingenuity and skill of the Kedar people. This ancient process, which dates back thousands of years, was not just a technical achievement, but also a cultural milestone that shaped the very fabric of their society. It was a process that demanded both brawn and brains, a combination of physical strength and intellectual prowess. The blacksmiths and metal workers were highly respected members of the community, their expertise passed down through generations. The smelting process was a delicate dance between fire and earth. The elements had to be perfectly balanced to transform the raw ore into something useful. This balance was achieved through years of experience and a deep understanding of the materials involved. The journey began in the iron-rich hills surrounding the Bujang Valley, where men, using rudimentary tools, extracted the ore from the earth. These early miners faced numerous challenges, from the physical labor of digging to the dangers of collapsing tunnels and unpredictable weather. This ore, often mixed with other minerals and impurities, was then transported to the smelting sites where the true alchemy began. The transportation itself was a feat involving carts, animals, and sometimes even human carriers to move the heavy loads across difficult terrain. The heart of the operation was the furnace, a dome-shaped structure built of clay and brick. These furnaces were marvels of engineering, designed to withstand extreme temperatures and maintain a consistent heat necessary for smelting. These furnaces, fueled by charcoal, were capable of reaching incredibly high temperatures, hot enough to melt the iron ore and separate it from its impurities. The charcoal itself was a crucial component made from carefully selected wood that was burned in a controlled environment to produce the best quality fuel. It was a dangerous and demanding task, requiring careful control of the airflow and temperature to achieve the desired result. The blacksmiths had to be constantly vigilant, adjusting the bellows and monitoring the furnace to ensure that the process went smoothly. The molten iron, once separated from the slag, was then poured into molds to create a variety of tools, weapons, and other objects. This stage required precision and skill, as the molten metal had to be handled quickly and efficiently before it cooled and solidified. The finished products were not just functional, but also works of art, showcasing the craftsmanship and creativity of the Kedar people. From simple farming tools to intricate weapons, each piece told a story of its own, reflecting the culture and values of the society that created it. Section 4. Iron flows through the Maritime Silk Road. Kadar's geographical location proved to be a strategic advantage. 
Situated along the bustling maritime Silk Road, the kingdom became a crucial hub for trade between East and West. Ships laden with spices, silks, and porcelain from the East sailed into Qadar's ports. They sought not only exotic goods, but also the high-quality iron that Qadar produced in abundance. This iron, prized for its strength and durability, was traded far and wide, reaching the shores of India, Persia, and beyond. It fueled the growth of empires, providing the raw material for weapons, armor, and tools that were essential for both agriculture and warfare. Qadar's iron was not merely a commodity. It was a currency of power and influence, shaping the geopolitical landscape of the ancient world. Section 5. Empires Built on Iron The impact of Qadar's iron trade extended far beyond its borders. The wealth generated from this trade fueled the growth of empires across Asia. The demand for iron was insatiable, and Qadar, with its abundant resources and skilled artisans, was well positioned to meet this demand. Iron weapons and armor provided a decisive advantage in warfare, allowing kingdoms to expand their territories and consolidate their power. The agricultural revolution, driven by iron tools, led to increased food production, population growth, and the rise of cities. The iron that flowed out of Qadar's ports helped to shape the destiny of nations. It is no exaggeration to say that the iron of Qadar played a pivotal role in the rise and fall of empires, the spread of ideas and technologies, and the interconnectedness of the ancient world. The echoes of Qadar's iron industry can be felt even today in the cultural and historical tapestry of Southeast Asia.